The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, who pourest out upon all who desire it the spirit of grace and of supplication, deliver us when we draw near to thee from coldness of heart and wanderings of mind, that with steadfast thoughts and kindled affections we may worship thee in spirit and in truth. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name through Christ our Lord. Hear what our Lord Jesus Christ saith. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and the great commandment, and the second is like unto it, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Yeah. 
The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Let us pray. Almighty God, who has poured upon us the new light of thine incarnate word, grant that the same light enkindled in our hearts may shine forth in our lives through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the unity of the Holy Ghost, one God, 
world without end. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My soul shall exult in my God. For he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness. As a bridegroom decks himself with a garland, and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. For as the earth brings forth its shoots, and as a garden causes what is sown in it to spring up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring forth before all the nations. For Zion's sake, I will not keep silent, and for Jerusalem's sake, I will not rest, until her vindication goes forth as brightness and her salvation as a burning torch. The nations shall see your vindication and all the kings your glory. And you shall be called by a new name, which the mouth of the Lord will give. You shall be a crown of beauty in the hand of the Lord, and a royal diadem in the hand of your God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. that she was lost from the letter of St. Paul to the Galatians. Now before faith came, we were confined under the law, kept under restraint until faith should be revealed, so that the law was our custodian until Christ came, 
that we might be justified by faith. But now that faith has come, we are no longer under a custodian. But when the time had fully come, God sent forth his Son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those who were under the law, so that we might receive adoption as sons. And because you are sons, God has sent the Spirit of his Son into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father. So through God you are no longer a slave, but a son, and if a son, then an heir. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory be to thee, O Lord. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came for testimony to bear witness to the light that all might believe through him. He was not the light, but came to bear witness to the light. The true light that enlightens every man was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made through him, yet the world knew him not. He came to his own home, and his people received him not. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, full of grace and truth. We have beheld his glory, glory as the only Son from the Father. John bore witness to him and cried, this was he of whom I said, He who comes after me ranks before me, for he was before me. And from his fullness have we all received grace upon grace. For the law was given through Moses, grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God, 
the only Son, who is in the bosom of the Father, he has made him known. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to thee, O Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. The Christmas story reveals to us that God acts into history, into the world of ordinary people, and transforms not only our individual lives, but upends history itself. This is what John means when he says, and the Word became, f the, and the word became flesh and dwelt among us, full of grace and truth. We have beheld his glory, glory as of the only Son from the Father. Jesus Christ has made God known, present, visible. He did this in a small corner of the empire and among a select and small group of ordinary people. What must have seemed like a minor kerfuffle in a far-flung province in the empire, background noise at the court on the Palatine, began in the manger at Bethlehem and slowly entered the foreground of history, eventually converting an emperor and overtaking the empire, the whole known world. To all who received him, John tells us in this morning's gospel, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. The Incarnation brought with it transformation and the inauguration of a new age. John and the other evangelists, along with all the people who first encountered Jesus incarnate, recognized in him the fulfillment of prophecy. Isaiah spoke of one who would come into the world to bring good tidings to the afflicted. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison to those who are bound to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn. According to Luke, Jesus himself identified with this mission that would both bring justice on a human scale and on the cosmic scale would usher in a new age. The incarnation is a source of joy and represents the promise of hope. Today's reading from Isaiah is taken from just a bit further along in Isaiah 61 and helps us understand a little better how the evangelists made meaning of Jesus' messianic arrival and can give us language, give voice to our own expected hope and joy that Christmas brings with it. The messianic prophet, having announced his program to restore justice to Israel, sings a song of thanksgiving. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My soul shall exult in my God. For he has clothed me with the garment of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness, as a bridegroom decks himself with a garland, and as a bride adorns herself with jewels. To the Christian reader, this evokes all the talk we heard this fall in Matthew's Gospel about the kingdom of God being compared to a banquet or a feast. The Messiah is clothed in the correct garment, for God has given it to him personally. He is like the bridegroom for whom the maidens waited, arrived and ready for the feast to begin. The great celebration that accompanies the arrival of the messianic figure is not simply a party to be enjoyed. It is a monumental endeavor in which we can join to bring good tidings to the afflicted, bind up the brokenhearted, proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison to those who are bound. The incarnation then is a celebration of justice prioritized. The resonance for the Christian reader of this text grows even richer, as the Messianic reader explains, for as the earth brings forth its shoots, 
and as a garden causes what is sown in it to spring up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring forth before all the nations. We are familiar with the kingdom of God being compared to the processes of nature. We can imagine how the new age begins with something as small as a seed and after the seeming death that comes with winter, sends up powerful shoots that will embody the changes God brings. As my Old Testament professor Brevard Childs put it, he connects the new order of righteousness with the growth of a community of faith acknowledged by all nations. The coming of the Messiah, the prophet, tells us will be a great thing, and he will not be able to contain himself. For Zion's sake I will not keep silent, and for Jerusalem's sake I will not rest until her vindication goes forth as brightness and her salvation as a burning torch. The prophet shows his willingness to engage with the powers of the world, risk his safety, all for the sake of the emerging kingdom of God, which, while it begins humbly like that seed, eventually will be recognized by all the nations and place the priorities of the God of Israel before all else. The nation shall see your vindication and all the kings your glory, and you shall be called by a new name which the mouth of the Lord will give. You shall be a crown of beauty in the hand of the Lord and a royal diadem in the hand of your God. This rebuilding of Zion can be interpreted as being fulfilled not in the physical restoration of a place, but in the works of the Messiah who will herald the new age. These words from Isaiah give us an added perspective on the Incarnation as we've been experiencing this Christmas time. They show us that Jesus' birth was anticipated and desired, and from the beginning the expectation was that God's self-expression into time and space would have consequences in the lives of real people, would make a difference to those who are suffering, marginalized. God would upset the received human wisdom of who and what are important and bring justice in an act of supreme joy. John the Evangelist knew this. He knew that the Incarnation, the Word becoming flesh, flesh would raise us up, engage us in God's work, for to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. The Incarnation, the coming of the Messiah, unites our purpose with that of God and sets us upon a new path as we watch the unfolding kingdom of God. Amen. I believe in one God, the Father, Father Almighty, Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Ghost of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of the Father and he shall come again with glory to judge both the quick and the dead whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord and giver of life, who proceedeth from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spake by the prophets. And I believe one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. 
Let us pray for the Church and for the world. Let us pray for the church and for the world. Grant, almighty God, that all who confess thy name may be united in thy truth, live together in thy love, and reveal thy glory in the world. We pray for Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury, Michael, our presiding bishop, and for Andy, Alan, and Mary, our bishops. In the Anglican communion, we pray for Christians, in other denominations and the work of the ecumenical movement. His Holiness, Pope Francis, Bishop of Rome. His All Holiness, Archbishop Bartholomew of Constantinople, New Rome. And Ecumenical Patriarch, the General Secretary of the World Council of Churches, Bishop Ivan M. Abrahams. General Secretary, World Methodist Council, the Reverend Chris Ferguson. General Secretary of the World Communion of Reformed Churches. In the Diocese of New York, we pray for St. John's in the Wilderness, Stony Point. We pray for our companion parish, St. Savior, Pimlico, London. We pray for those in formation for holy orders, especially Leanne, Stephen, Mary, and Pam, and all those taking the general ordination exams. Lord, in thy mercy, Hear our prayer. Guide the people of this land and of all the nations in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good. We pray for the leaders of the nations, especially our nation, for Donald, President of the United States of America, Joseph, President-elect, and Kamala, Vice President-elect, Andrew, Governor of the State of New York, Bill, mayor of the city of New York, and for all those in the legislatures and the judiciary. We pray God to give the, to the people of our country a zeal for justice and the strength of forbearance, that we may use our liberty in accordance with God's gracious will. Lord, in thy mercy. Hear our prayer. Give us all a reverence for the earth as thy known creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others, and to thine honor and glory. Lord, in thy mercy, hear our prayer. Bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours, and grant that we may serve Christ in them, and love one another as he loves us. Lord, in thy mercy, hear our prayer. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of thy salvation. We pray for those throughout the world affected by the coronavirus pandemic, for those who have fallen ill and for their families and friends, for those who have died, for the bereaved, and for all those who minister to them and their needs. We pray for those of our parish family who desire our prayers, especially for Kathleen, Rachel, Gaylord Priest, John, Phyllis, Anna Christina, Nancy, Forrest, Kent, Priest, James, Anne, Bridget, Julia, Carmen, Betty Ann, Colton, Ian, Mary, Daniel, Claudia, Priest, Susan, Leocadio, uh, Zenobia, and Juana. Lord, in thy mercy, hear our prayer. We commend to thy mercy all who have died, that thy will for them may be fulfilled. And we pray that we may share with our Lord Saint Mary, Saint Ignatius of Antioch, and all thy saints in thine eternal kingdom. We pray especially for Mary Harcourt. Remember especially those whose anniversary of death fall at this time, Kenneth Kaiser, benefactor, Scott McDowell, and Olga Graham. 
Lord, in thy mercy. Hear our prayer. Almighty God, who has given us thine only begotten Son to take our nature upon him, and as at this time to be born of the Virgin Mary, grant that we, being regenerate and made thy children by adoption and grace, may daily be renewed by thy Holy Spirit, through the same our Lord Jesus Christ, who liveth and reigneth with thee, and the same Spirit, one God, world without end. Amen. Let us humbly confess our sins unto Almighty God. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men, we acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed by thought, word, and deed against thy divine majesty, provoking most justly thy wrath and indignation against us. We do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us, the burden of them is intolerable. Have mercy upon us, have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. For thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in newness of life, to the honor and glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins to all those who with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you unto everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Sucipe Sancta Trinitas, Sancta Blatzionum, Quamigo Indignus Peccator Affero, in honore tuo Beati Maria, et omnium sanctorum torum pro peccati se defensionibus meis, et pro
CD of Spiritu Sakti. Pray, brothers and sisters, that this our sacrifice may be acceptable unto the Lord our God. May the Lord receive this sacrifice at thy hands, to the praise and glory of his name, both to our benefit and that of all his holy church. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up unto the let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is meet and right so to do. It is very meet, right, and our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, almighty, everlasting God because thou didst give Jesus Christ, thine only Son, to be born for us, who by the mighty power of the Holy Ghost was made very man of the substance of the Virgin Mary, his mother, that we might be delivered from the bondage of sin and receive far to become thy children. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, Psalm. All glory be to thee, almighty God, our heavenly Father, for that thou of thy tender mercy didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made there by his one oblation of himself once offered a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation, and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and did institute, and in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory of that, his precious death and sacrifice, until his coming again. For in the night in which he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he brake it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this. This is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many 
for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it in remembrance of me. Wherefore, O Lord and Heavenly Father, according to the institution of thy dearly beloved Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, we thy humble servants do celebrate and make here before thy divine majesty, with these thy holy gifts which we now offer unto thee, the memorial thy Son hath commanded us to make, having in remembrance his blessed passion and precious death, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, rendering unto thee most hearty thanks for the innumerable benefits procured unto us by the same. And we most humbly beseech thee, O merciful Father, to hear us, and of thy almighty goodness vouchsafe to bless and sanctify with thy word and Holy Spirit these thy gifts and creatures of bread and wine, that we receiving them according to thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood. And we earnestly desire thy fatherly goodness mercifully to accept this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, most humbly beseeching thee to grant that by the merits and death of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, that we and all thy whole church may obtain remission of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. And here we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls and bodies to be a reasonable, holy and living sacrifice unto thee, humbly beseeching thee that we and all others who shall be partakers of this holy communion may worthily receive the most precious body and blood of thy Son, Jesus Christ, be filled with thy grace and heavenly benediction, and made one body with him, that he may dwell in us and we in him. And although we are unworthy through our manifold sins to offer unto thee any sacrifice, yet we beseech thee to accept this, our bounden duty and service, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom, in the unity of the Holy Ghost, all honor and glory be unto thee. O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. And now, as our Saviour Christ hath taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Ut open misericordia tua juti, et a peccato sima sempre liberi, et ab omni per debastione sacuri, periundum Christum dominum nostrum filium tuum, qui tecum vivit et magnatum unitate spiritu sancti dea per omnia secula seculorum. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And with thy spirit.
We do not presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table, but thou art the same Lord whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. Amen. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him that taketh away the sins of the world. given for thee. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we most heartily thank Thee for that Thou dost feed us in these holy mysteries with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of Thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and dost assure us thereby of Thy favor and goodness towards us, and that we are very members incorporate in the mystical body of Thy Son, the blessed company of all faithful people, and are also heirs through hope of thy everlasting kingdom. And we humbly beseech thee, O Heavenly Father, so to assist us with thy grace, that we may continue in that holy fellowship and do all such good works as thou hast prepared for us to walk in. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. Please be seated. Very warm welcome to each and every one of you today to St. Ignatius of Antioch. Thank you for tuning in on today's live stream. We're so glad that you're with us and we're so glad that we continue to have a ways of staying connected with each other. Tomorrow uh, we, we go back to Zoom 
uh, for evening prayer, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday this week, the Great Litany on Friday, morning prayer on Saturday morning, the Office of the Dead resumes after Epiphany, um, and then we're back here on Sunday for Solemn Mass, and our preacher is going to be our dear friend, the Right Reverend Andrew St. John, uh, who, uh, who, who, who we see from time to time and who is a wonderful preacher and a wonderful presence, and I hope that you'll join us for that Mass and to hear Bishop St. John preach. Uh, I look forward to seeing you uh, during the week. I look forward to being in touch with you. Be in touch with me. Uh, I sent an email around yesterday. The wardens and I sent an email around yesterday about end-of-year giving. Uh, we encourage you to do that. Uh, there are some tax advantages to, to giving in 2020 provided by the CARES Act. We sent you some information about that. And as, but as I wrote in the email, uh, we don't pretend to be tax professionals. So we are, uh, so, so consult a tax professional if you have, if you have really complicated questions. But it's not that complicated to press that donate button on PayPal and, uh, and help out your church and to fulfill your 2020 pledge or to make your capital camp payment. These are the things, these are the nuts and bolts things that are gonna keep us going. Um, for the next six months, the next year, as we emerge from this pandemic. So thank you for your support in 2020, and I will see you on YouTube in 2021, but we still have a few more days uh, together on Zoom. May Almighty God, who sent his Son to take our nature upon him, bless you in this holy season. Scatter the darkness of sin and brighten your heart with the light of his holiness. Amen. May God, who sent his angels to proclaim the glad news of the Savior's birth, fill you with joy and make you heralds of the gospel. Amen. May God, who in the Word made flesh, join heaven to earth and earth to heaven, give you his peace and favor. Amen. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, be upon you this day and remain amongst you always. The Lord be with you. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord.